cold-hearted con man or reformed killer? Yeah, KSL's Cold Podcast concludes this week with a look at Doug Lovell's latest effort to reverse his death sentence and convince the courts that he is a changed man. I had just finished producing a documentary. When former KSL TV producer Candace Madsen went on KSL News Radio in 2019, she had no idea her words were echoing inside Utah's death row until she got this letter in the mail. It didn't give very much information about him other than that he was an inmate. But then there was this pamphlet. It's titled Unforeseen Angel. And inside, Doug describes his upbringing, his parents' divorce, his drug abuse, and what landed him on death row taking the life of an innocent person. He makes it sound like it's a natural progression of like divorce, drugs, alcohol, I kill a person. At the time Doug sent this letter, his latest appeal was headed to court and his supporters were coming forward to testify about what a generous, caring person he's become. The more I got to know Doug, the more I was very impressed with how remorseful he was. He just got a kind heart. I started thinking, I wonder if he's just trying to kind of get character witnesses. Doug's letter caught our attention, but not for the reasons he might have intended. We realized Doug used the word I 30 times in that pamphlet. The name Joyce Yost, the woman he had murdered, did not appear once. It's a pattern with him that he doesn't want to disrespect the family or disrespect Joyce's memory. You're disrespecting Joyce by not saying her name, by not remembering her. He's managed to make the story all about him for more than 35 years. I think Doug Lovell likes the limelight. The this horrible awesome. perpetrator becomes the story, and that's difficult because she was so awesome and he took all that away. Doug Lovell has twice gone to court for the murder of Joyce Yost and twice been placed on death row for that crime. But the question now rests before the Utah Supreme Court whether or not he will get a third chance to make the case he deserves life and a chance for parole. If the Supreme Court sides with Doug, it could clear the way for yet another trial. But even if he loses, it won't mean an end to this case. Doug's only scratched the surface of his appeals, and he is not getting any younger. I think that we have a better chance of him dying of old age in there than we do of him dying by the hand of state at this point. Joyce Yost's children have spent decades unable to lay their mother to rest. They've lost hope Doug will ever come clean about where her body is. I don't believe that even at the 11th hour, if we ever were, were to reach the 11th hour, that Doug would be the one that would give us that information. I truly in my heart believe that he won't. Prosecutors have twice won death sentences against Doug. It's unlikely he'll ever walk free, but equally unlikely he'll ever be executed. Is that justice served for Joyce? <sighs> there is no justice for Joyce. Let's just preface it by saying that. When you kill somebody, you kill somebody. There's no such thing. Uh, it's justice for what he did to Joyce. But there is no you know, justice for Joyce. Joyce is dead. And uh, nothing can ever change that. It's Dave Colley reporting there the final episode. An entire season of Cold Justice for Joyce is available right now. You can listen on Amazon Music.